what is the one thing that when you do it, it just suspends you in your heart and in your pleasure? Start with something smaller, maybe. Start with something where it's like, I love comedy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on making one joke a week for myself. I'm gonna just work on creating a joke a week. Or I love, I used to paint when I was little. I don't paint anymore because I'm not a really an artist. And I don't care. Take some paint, some paper, and just go intuitively. Whatever colors you feel, no one ever has to see it. But if you loved that once, and you start incorporating some of those small things, it starts to open up some memories of things that you used to do and, and to remind yourself to be in a place of joy. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. Oh, our quote of the day, happiness is ethereal, but joy is your birthright. And that is from our guest today, Grace Harry. Um, happy Monday, everybody. Hope you guys are doing great wherever you are. We uh, are very excited to be with you today as usual. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to remind you all, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so we can continue to be here through this challenging time. We are facing a, um, a definitely challenging time in our world. So we are bringing you the best experts to help you through these times. And if you subscribe, you'll get your little notification to remind you so you never miss an incredible expert because somehow we top ourselves every day. I don't know how we do it. Great team, obviously, mm. um, but uh, we do. And then if you haven't joined our Patreon, let me just take a second to tell you that that is where it is at. We are starting these incredible workshops. Uh, we did one with Sada Simone and it was so amazing to get to know all of our listeners that have joined us on Patreon on an intimate level. We went around before the, the workshop and said hello to everybody. And um, I got such joy from meeting everybody and knowing who we've been um, speaking with and, mm -hmm. and collaborating on this healing journey with. So it was really cool. We don't have ads over there, so you get ad-free shows. Um, but also, like I said, uh, on top of the extra content you'll get there, you also will have access to these incredible experts. And that's always been a goal of mine, and we've been able to finally implement this, um, where you can ask questions of the experts. You know, people were asking Saw different questions about how to be their own guru, and we have incredible ones lined up. So if you haven't joined Patreon, we're eventually going to completely migrate over there. Please join now at whatever level you can, um, and uh, you will not regret it. It will be life-changing. P.S. Kevin, who um, was half listening, actually mm. not really listening to our Patreon taping, finally listened to it and called me this morning to tell me how impactful it was on his life already wow. and how he's naming his... Mm -hmm. um, inner critic critic um won't share the name <laughs> but he found someone in his life that, <laughs> that was perfect to model the name after and he just was so blown away by it he's like i have to listen to it a second time so join us at patreon we made it really easy kelsey created a link tree on Ooh. instagram mm -hmm. so if you go to maria menounos on instagram you'll see a link tree click on that you can just click right onto patreon and become a member and join us. So our guest today is a uh, joy strategist and she's going to be chatting with us about reinviting the purity of our childhood into our lives and to create a, a state of joy. And I will say that it's funny, we did a little deep dive um, on Dancing with the Stars mm, yesterday with great. Kelsey because she had never seen any of my dancing. But what was really funny, aside from the fact that I forgot just how many dances I did, because I was like, oh, here are the top like four. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, but the Viennese waltz. Oh, but the tango. I got my Beyonce moment. Anyway, it was really fun, especially on the heels of Dancing with the Stars coming back. And I was what I was so surprised by was the countless videos, because when you're living it and I was getting like two, maybe three hours of sleep for 14 weeks, I... I it all went by, I don't remember. Mm. When you're living it, it's a different story. When you look back, we had so much fun. Derek and I were two ridiculous peas in a pod, <laughs> two like 12 year olds having so much fun. So I DM'd him a video <laughs> of us 
when I couldn't walk and I had to do this appearance in Vegas and so we had to go out there to do our rehearsals and we got one of those like wheelchairs the mobile wheelchairs <laughs> we had all of our oh stuff packed on it and I had to sit on his lap as he like moved us around and then we get into the elevator and this guy's looking at us like all horrified <laughs> Jeff it was amazing we that literally amazing we're just like do you want to watch something and that was what we watched for yeah. a solid hour yeah and it well, was Amazing. But the point was, is when she, when Grace talks about that joyful, yeah. childlike mm. thing, that's when I got to be that. And that's why that mm. time yeah. of my life was so special because you just yeah. get to just be you and have fun. Yeah. And I mean, that was before all the light was totally stomped out on me. I mean, they didn't <laughs> get it all, but they definitely stomped a lot of it out. Mm -hmm. um, they, the collective, they, you know who you are. <laughs> um <laughs> But it's okay. I forgive you. Forgive um, you. And it made me better. But mm. that is what we're trying to get back to. And so I'm excited to chat with her today about that. All right, guys, let's get to our incredible guest. I'm so excited to chat with her. So Grace Harry was a widely celebrated creative director in the music industry, but still wasn't happy. After a few divorces, including one to Grammy winner Usher, she took time to learn what she really enjoys and wants to do during a transformative period in her personal life. Now Grace is a widely celebrated joy strategist who helps people find happiness by reconnecting with the purity of their uncorrupted childhood. Ooh, let's unpack that. <laughs> Grace has worked with high profile execs, celebrated pop culture icons like comic, and today she is with us. Hi, Grace. Hi. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. You've had it's such an interesting journey. Um, and as I um, as I look at it, I mean, it's you've been so you were so busy probably being busy and and taking care of everybody like you say that you never had time to just stop. And once you did, you had that transformative kind of moment. So I, I want you to talk about, at first of all, how how somebody that many would perceive to have it all, right, could still be so unhappy. Yes, and, and, I, and I want to clarify, because I don't think this is an idea of unhappy. Um, I think that when I sat back and really looked at where my life had evolved to at 47, I wasn't just in, in this idea of of just my infinite possibilities. Mm, you know, like there's a lot that I was doing in my life that I felt I'd been doing for a long time in terms of wellness and self-care and just preservation. Um, but when I really understood myself, when I took the time to figure out how I felt and what I wanted, I, and you know, even going back a little further, we have so many myths about what you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to be behave and what's, you know, people that shoot us to death. So when I really sat back and felt my own heart, I just wasn't living for it. I was really living for other people's ideas of what should be my life. And that's what I had to get to. How do you get to that? <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, one of the, the things I love to focus on is just how we developed, who we are as, as humans. And how we develop is we learn things. We're just people that are sponges and we learn. And that's the process. And some people even say this is a learning planet. But the problem is, is that we've come into a family, and I always make the joke that um, the most important job in the universe is creating a future human, right? Raising a future adult. And there are some cultures that that is the greatest honor, and it's supported as a culture. You know, if, you, if we were a couple and we were preparing to have a, a child, we would have a community support us and, and bring us to a place so for a month prior we could, you know, work on ourselves and, and be as happy and healthy and whole as we could to bring another human in. And that's an ideal, completely supported um, human being, right? Not everyone has that luxury. Mm -hmm. But when you come into that environment, you come in with people who are really wanting to raise you as a future adult. But being the most important job, only amateurs can apply. Isn't that a bizarre thing? Like yeah. only amateurs can be parents the first time. So either that's the joke of the universe, hmm. or it means that that's really the time for us to be, have a second childhood as we really raise a future adult, not a giant baby, and start to really talk to them in leadership. You know, really understand that as life changes and seasons change, we change. And instead of trying to live our lives, going to an Ivy League college with a kindergarten emotional education, we start to really honor, and that's not just a baby, that's a new career or a new 
a new perspective or a transformation, it's honoring it as a beginner with the beginner's mind mm -hmm. and humbling themselves and surrendering to new information. But unfortunately for us, we get so stuck on these stories and some of them are pre-verbal things that we created in our, in our, you know, our complete free analytical state where we were just experiencing ourselves. And these well-meaning amateur first time adults are coming in and impressing information on us. Oh, you know, Maria, you're, you're not great at math. It's, which is a, that uh, I was saying to Jeff before, which is a Joe Dispenza quote, but it's real. Yeah. And we, we, we have great intentions, but we're putting all these perspectives and beliefs on, on these forming humans without giving them an opportunity to feel, how do I feel? And then we're stigmatized about feelings. And then this is my last long-winded point is if you even think about the way children are created, right? The heart comes online first. The brain is after. So the brain is just a giant computer. But when we're living in this giant computer, we're only rehashing old information, other people's ideas, memories, focuses, beliefs for you. You're not in your heart, which is where your imagination comes from and, and a new ideas and, and your inner guidance. So when I really understood that I was living in this computer idea completely in my head, I realized I had to get out of there because nothing was going to blossom from that space. Um, in your head, you're dead. It's real. And so dropping into the heart is dropping into a childlike state. It is getting back to the birthright of joy within our own hearts and giving us permission to explore without judgments of I should be further along or I should be this or no, we're just like, oh, I'm open to myself. So I, I, that's really, that was my journey. Wow. Wow. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I'd be curious to know what your should ofs were while you were in the music industry, right? So you were yeah. so successful. I mean, I was watching even a video this morning of Common being like, she helped me get my favorite co album cover together. And, um, and you were, you were killing it. Um, but obviously you had another path you were supposed to go on and, and probably to help the very people that you were helping before, but in a different way. Yes, a hundred percent. And, and I'm so happy, you know, we all have our stories, right? And one of my stories was that I, I'm a 10th grade high school dropout. And so I always believed I wasn't educated. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my thing. And I felt like that created this pattern of overcompensating. I always wanted to feel like I was smart and, and, and show that I was contributing. But all those things were external. And it wasn't until I have a good friend, Mickey, who's just one of the most interesting women I've ever met, and Mickey Agarwal. And she wrote a book last year called uh, Disrupt Her. And one of the things she talks about is, and I always judge myself for not having a career path, like a, a traditional career path. But she's like, you have a, a lit path where you're like, you follow your heart. And the reason I say that is because even Common, he references that cover because he was in a very complicated heart space when we were working on that project. He was in between relationships and he was just a little squished, as Lauren Zander says, just smushed, just a little bit. Um, and so I felt that. And I've always worked with artists from a, sp a perspective of you have to give who you're creating this art for, whatever visual art, whatever. And we're all creators. We all create in our way. But if you don't come from your heart and your passion, you're not going to connect to someone else's heart and passion. Mm -hmm. So even working with artists, you know, was, it was always my con concept to really bring them into the highest vibration of their energy and their, and I was always so good at doing that for other people. And so I really got this, he had this, you know, there was a, we're going to do this big album cover. We're going to create this whole thing, but that wasn't really where he was at that time. So it was a concept of like giving the truth of your heart. And so we took that whole thing and really talked through that. And it was then that I understood, oh, you really, this album is about just being. And so then this doesn't need a big concept. It needs people to feel you, to be in your eyes, to connect to you. And him and other artists I worked with would always say, you know, the best thing about working with you is that your energy and this idea. And so I realized I was doing this thing for other people where I was really helping them open up this vault and really create something that other people could connect to on a very profound level. And I couldn't do it for myself. Mm -hmm. And I realized I couldn't do it for myself because I really wasn't myself. You know, you hear imposter syndrome and all these things. We all have that because we're not living authentically in our, the voice in our own hearts, our own, our inner GPS. And so my shoulds were then I was a, I'm a recovering fear projectionite. So I was just, my whole idea was a scam to be wanted by everyone. So I just lived a life to be the most beguiling and the most exciting to always be wanted. And, you know, when we all have our stories that we run in our survival, and yes, I can go back to, I was a, in, in foster, foster care, I was born to two teenage parents who are amazing people, but were young and figuring it out too. 
but we then take those things and make a story. Mm -hmm. So my story was I had to take care of everyone else and to be loved, to understand why you would love me is because I was loving you so hard. Because that was the, the story I created in being the kind of the partner to my parents because we were all figuring it out. So I created this story that if I, if, you know, if, if I'm going to make Maria love me, it's in taking such good care of her and then I'll teach her how to love me. But what was missing in that equation oh. was me. Oh. Completely missing was Grace. And so now here I am at the end of a third marriage and I, you know, your kids do as you do, not as you say. And I felt very complete, Maria. I've had a very fun life. Like I've had a very fun life. I'm not missing anything. But what I was missing was partnership. And partnership is in everything. It's a friendship. It's your people you work with. It's who you're next to in your commute. The two minutes you're online with someone at a, at a bank before we were in quarantine and you had a conversation. Those are all intimate relationships. Those are all opportunities to open your heart and to, to grow. But all we do is protect ourselves. We go to the brain and we remember and the brain says, no, Ma Maria, remember that time you talked to Grace and she said that weird thing and then it triggered something in you that you don't even realize from a pre-verbal story and all of a sudden you're in defense. And then you're wondering why you're not connecting to people. So I it was carrying all this stuff and I could see it for other people. And then when I realized I loved music and I loved expression of, of entertainment, but I didn't love where it was going at the time, I had to think about what I wanted to do next. And that was a Pandora's box of, who am I? <laughs> really? Who am I really? How old were you I, when you had that moment? What'd you say? 47. You were 47 when you were like, who am I? Yeah. I find that so inspiring because I really think that anybody at any time has to find themselves because I also think we evolve, right? And we change. So it's finding the, your next version of yourself. You might, you might have been in your right self before, right? Absolutely. And there are always improvements to be made along the journey because we are, we're constantly re-raising ourselves, <laughs> as I say. Um, so I think that in the process of re-raising yourself, someday you wake up and you're like, hmm, like I said to myself, I'm like, I was trapped in an old dream. That wasn't my dream anymore. And so this was my dream, like this journey. And so I, I connect with you so deeply on it because I'm, I'm on the same journey. I love learning. I love growing. Like you said, when you're, when you're in your head, you're, you're dead, but also when you're not growing, you're dying. And, um, and we have to kind of take those chances to, to go face, face all of those things. Everything you said, a hundred percent. And, and what, what really is, the thing is that the fact that you have the story that you love learning mm. is huge because uh, what that means is that, you know, that you're not committed to certainty. And unfortunately, most people, their, their, their North star is certainty. Mm -hmm. It's not the big dream. And that's where people don't realize you have your conscious and your subconscious. You have the first voice. Wow, well, Maria, that, that shirt, I, I, how often do you wear a white shirt? You look amazing. Then the other vo voice, I don't know. Is that right? Does that work? And that's your subconscious. That's that's not the that's not the voice that's really should be driving the bus. You know, the pigeon drives the bus story. I love that one. But the problem is, is that we don't realize that because of our survival stories we've created for ourselves that we're still working with, we don't realize that's the star of the story. We're not the star of the story because we're not following our actual gut because we're so afraid of the one time we did do it and we felt that pain. Mm -hmm. So even the stories around learning speaks to the fear people have around not being perceived as smart, not really being capable because they don't feel that they are in their own heart. Even this word triggered makes me crazy because now that we've gotten so smart and we have so much access to so much information, we all have this great lingo, right? We're yeah. triggered. But that <laughs> makes me so crazy because triggered is not the end. The triggered is not the end of the stop of the train where you get off and you're done. That's where you get in the car, right? That's like, oh, I'm triggered. Why am I triggered? I got on with you. I'm like, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Why is Maria making me feel so uncomfortable? I know it's not Maria because we know that people can't, I mean, we learned this in what, fourth grade, you know, you're, what is it? Um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words. we even, we even teach ourselves these things really early, but then as we start to have more pain or things that are uncomfortable, or we don't like change or anything that represents that we are in danger, that's when we stop talking outside our heads. And so what you just said about learning and growing and being the beginner's mind and the watcher and all the things that are the fun place to be in life, it's why I went back to that book of Mickey, that lit path, being confident enough to know, you know what? I love this. I, I was a chef and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I now want to be a publicist. I don't want to do that anymore. I now want to be a, and literally I got that from my, both my parents. They're resourceful and they really do, they did teach me that you can do anything you, you put your mind to. Mm-hmm. This is oh, a belief in them, which is amazing. My dad always used to say, Maria, you can do whatever you put your mind to. And I believed him. <laughs> and, that, and that's it. So we had an advantage because yeah. that even is a luxury. That means we had one parent, at least, that really saw something in us and pushed it. But then you have other stories that are really traumatic of, of, of well-meaning, well-intended adults who do really atrocious things to each other and to their mm-hmm. children and to their families because they're in that kind of pain or because that's the love language that they were given. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. really important that it's all of that goes back to, you know, it's not even the inner child to me because I believe that we're frozen in the age that we formed the largest survival pattern. So I literally can look to like, and your first interrelationship is your opposite sex parent. So I can really even think about like the dynamics around my relationship with my father and the things that I created that then became the story, not only with my husband's and, and great loves, but my son. And so that was really interesting to witness it was when I really, I went into the last three and a half years of a major deep dive because I was like, I'm gonna get rid of this. I, I know that my passion in life is to feel great and I don't know why and I'm gonna trust it. And then as soon as I felt amazing, Maria, and free, no secret in the world, nothing that anyone could say that would break me, which is really what we're all managing, mm-hmm. secret and being broken, then I could do anything and speak to anyone and then I wanted everyone to feel this good. And then the real work started because what was so hard to see and sad to deal with is how scared people are of happiness. Mm-hmm. It's not that people don't want joy and happiness, it's just that we're much more comfortable with the devil you know. I don't know why I keep doing quote fingers today. It's like my thing. <laughs> um, or like ignorance is bliss or all these expressions we've created to not grow, to not change. Yeah. And so that's the really, that's the real deep work I do with all my knee journeys and the hooky days is getting people to reconnect to their, their birthright of joy. Not to create something new, but just to find things that already lit you up. To go back to your own scavenger hunt to your own heart. Mm-hmm. And let's put back into place the things that you always had or you know let's work those muscles like retrain the joy the joy muscles yeah I like that because I always try to explain even to myself sometimes it's like okay do I want to be here in purgatory or do I want to make that little hop over and that little hop over is just a choice there's just like a little work and then you can be here but if you just stay here ugh, that doesn't feel good so I'd rather mm-hmm. do the work to hop over Please, let's you and I just take a tour and just go around the planet and just get everyone to really understand that. Yeah. And, and, you know, people get angry at me even. Like, I'm coming here with joy and pleasure, and it's amazing what that tickles in people. Oh, and that yeah. is where the real information people say, say to me, you know, before maybe like in last year, December, January, my friends were so into what I was doing. That there's a little bit of a snicker. Mm-hmm. Now that we're all in, you know, the situation we're in in the globe, people are understanding that pleasure and joy is a, 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 a um, essential tool for transformation, not a luxury. And what you what you find is that as soon as you start to go there and you make yourself the star of the story, that's when you really hear the information and it's not pretty. And that's when you hear the messages. Well, Maria, that's so selfish. Well, you're going on a trip with your friend? Wow, I wish I, I just, I'm much more of a humble person. Like you start to hear the things that people have said to you, well-meaning, but they sit in your subconscious and they impress on you that you're wrong for making yourself happy, that you're wrong for following your dreams, that somehow that's against being the best partner, parent, Mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneur, whatever is your your story. And really it's just them afraid to do it themselves. But then we've we've taught that to a nation. So now we've got to teach people how to really stop reaching outside for a guru or a shaman or and not that there's anything wrong. I believe you find your toolbox, you yep. create your toolbox and whatever tools you put, I don't care, I'm polyamorous when it comes to spirituality, religion, just find yours and create it and carry it with you always. It's a second to second, moment to moment reality, choosing yourself. It's not you wake up in the morning and you have a great morning, which is important, and I, I start there, but it's also every second of the day. It's if, if I were you know in a new relationship, that person called me, I would be immediately available for, you know, a, 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 just a pat in the back and supportive words and great quotes and a book to read, but we don't treat ourselves that way. Every second of the day, it's 
wow, I really want him. I really want a cookie. Why do you want a cookie? Well, I'm really feeling bad. I, I worked hard in that meeting and no one really got me. And then we start to really have these conversations with ourselves. We learn what we really need and want. And it's never the addiction that we want to numb out and hide. It's always something more simple and sweet and easy. It just, we put so much stuff on it that makes it feel out of our reach and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, I I was saying earlier in the show how um, we did a deep dive because Kelsey had never seen me on Dancing with the Stars and we started doing a deep dive on YouTube. But what the most fun part was, was seeing the in-between YouTube videos of Derek and I just being completely like moronic, hilarious, ridiculous, just pure childlike fun. And when I um, was reading about you and what we were doing today, I was like, gosh, isn't that just so funny that trying to find that childhood joy and bring it to the forefront of your life is something that we're going to focus on today when yesterday I was like, oh, it actually hit me. I was like, no wonder I had people trying to extinguish me. And I didn't understand why but I was too bright for them. Mm -hmm. And my mom would tell me that and I just never understood it. But when I see it, like I just see like there were, there weren't um, other people like us. We were just, we were two peas in a pod, just pure fun. And I was like, oh yeah, that's what I want more of in my life. That's a beautiful. And then that's, and that's what's interesting too, is you hear people, they want to start something. And it's the very fear that keeps them from starting it, but it's the very lack of fear that will give them what they want. Mm -hmm. And the people that are the most successful in whatever they do are the ones who really don't live in that fear, who just feel like I trust life. And so I'm going to take this step because my heart says yes. And then I'm going to trust that that's the journey, whatever it, it shapes up to be. And that is enviable to people because it seems like the scariest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it does feel like that because then when you're bright, shining this super bright light out to the world, if you stand in it, you kind of have to get it. And if you don't stand in it and you're just feeling it on you, it's making a shadow and it's just making you feel worse about yourself. So it's like you're saying, you either jump in and shine bright with me, right? Or you're going to feel this. You're going to feel this, especially right now. We're in a time right now where it's step into, step into the direction. If we haven't learned right now that there's no rules like no who says this is a mug who made that up let me decide it's something else that's where we are right now and so as much as it's scary and then, and we have real circumstances we have to pay our bills take care of our families but you can for three minutes a day do something towards your bigger dream you can i don't care if it's why you're going number two yeah you gotta give yourself the time to put yourself in the direction that you're gonna grow so for people who are stuck and they know something's not right, yeah. right? Like we all know when something's not right and it could be the early stages of not right or like a little further along when at that point we're, we're deeper in, how do you kind of get people on track? Yes, well, the most important thing is for people to realize right off that we're not asking anything that's a big time drain or a big commitment. When I say we, meaning anyone in your life that's asking you to grow. They're not, no one's asking you to quit everything or stop everything, but start to add some things in that really show you the beauty of your own heart. And, and the most, the easiest way to unearth that in people is how you start your day. And most people get up and they immediately are dragged down the street by everyone else's, as I said, shoulds, don't, can'ts, won'ts. As soon as they are reaching for their phone and checking social media, which is immediately you're in comparison to compare as a despair, I mean, get out of there or you're reaching into your boss or you're reaching out to see if you know you feel good about yourself because other people want you and then immediately you've handed your life over and your power and your beliefs of your destiny to someone else but if you start the day with even three minutes of i am the star of the story whether i don't care if you lay in bed and before you get out of bed talk to anyone you just roll in the sheets and, and say 20 gratitudes or you just look out the window and appreciate the sky or you see a piece of art in your room or something you created and you take a few minutes to just really feel that. Oh, I, I made that or I love that or that's beautiful or I love how I feel. You could take it a step further and I get out of bed and I do a, a dance trampoline party immediately. I can't even have my tea until I've done that. And I just go crazy and I make a playlist. 30 <laughs> minutes, I put my timer on 
And so I hit everything. I get exercise. I laugh at myself. I'm, I'm, it's goofy. I try to do sexy dancing. It's a mess. <laughs> so you just, it's starting the day really making sure that you impress on your subconscious that you are the star of the story, that you set the tone for yourself, that you're put, taking care of yourself first. It's like when you go on the plane and you put your mask on. They tell you, put your mask on first. I used to think that sounded crazy. I'm with my kids. I'm going to do that first. But it's true that if we're not strong, we can't be strong for anyone else. Mm -hmm. I can't be a tree and want to hold the entire ecology of everyone who lives in me if my roots are all damaged. So I think that's really the most important thing is how you start your day. And if, if you, you have to have five minutes for yourself, even if it's partly where you're getting ready in the morning. If you're brushing your teeth, sing, put a song on that reminds you of how invincible you feel. So while you're brushing your teeth, that's a moment. I sometimes put Kirtan chanting on in the bathroom while I'm taking a shower, I'm chanting. So incorporate it into your life. I'm not saying to add things, but just start to be more intentional of how you want to feel and change it. You start to feel, you look in the mirror and you're feeling bad about yourself, well change that. Start to go, you know what? I love this about you. I don't care if it's I like the one freckle on the left side of your cheek. It's just finding all the ways to start the beginning of your day, whatever time you get up, with making it about yourself. And so that you start to walk out the door and everything doesn't hit you with such impact because you're filled up a bit. So that that's the to me, that's the quickest little hack there is to start to make your days and then the, that will start to translate to your weeks and your months and your years, mm -hmm. making sure that you feel filled up first. Yeah. You know, something you said in one of the videos I was watching was um, how you didn't have time to feel or you didn't want to feel. And I think that a lot of women struggle with this. And even, um, you know, I'll talk to different people who are newly diagnosed with a cancer or whatever. And when I start to explain to them that they need to have a little bit of stillness in their life so they can hear messages that are supposed to come through or, um, or just slow the ride down a little bit because they don't even know I had um, one of our listeners who has a brain tumor, I mean, has a massive brain tumor and has not felt any symptoms. And I said, you absolutely should have been feeling symptoms, but you've been running so ragged for so long. You've not allowed yourself to feel, and now she's starting to feel things. And so it's interesting to me, that whole topic of feeling and what we allow and what we don't allow um, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. Yes. And you know, it's interesting because every, everyone, we're all, everyone who's saying any message of growth is, is saying similar things in different ways. And, and that idea of, um, stillness is just like what I was saying. When you bring up joy, all of a sudden the real messages come up, but that's exactly why people become so busy or create whatever addiction, because even busyness is an addiction. Anything that numbs you out and takes you outside of feeling your feelings. And so and if you don't have the tools to start to translate these feelings for yourself, when you start this process, it can be really overwhelming. So a lot of the things that, you know, I worked with this incredible life coach for Lauren Zander, who I, the Handel Method, and one of the things that she really promotes is getting accountability partners. And that was a game changer for me because we can bullshit ourselves all day. But if you have, you know, I, I like to say, we all need to build our own starting five. So what is the team that's going to win the game of life with you? Oh, so I love not, that. Yes, and, I, and because, you know, I just, I want, I don't want, I, I think that a lot of things in wellness become very meaning to one gender feeling or another. And really all these things are the same. Like how do you win a game is a similar thing to how you great, live a great life. And we're all saying similar things, which is get out of the addiction that pulls you so out of your heart that you can't feel your own joy. And, and the way to do that is to, figure out what is your real dream. Your real dream is not, you know, I want to be super busy and get on the airplane and get to a thousand meetings and pitching, whatever it is. Your dream is there's a dream. And we get so to this point where we're feeding the beast, keeping things afloat. Why? What we need to be doing is figuring out what's the dream for all of us. And it doesn't mean you disrupt your life. You, you do baby steps to that. But sitting in stillness is how you start to really hear what you need and want. And that becomes very scary for people. And so get an accountability partner. And that starting five is important. It's not people that are gonna yes you to death or tell you what you wanna hear. The people that really love you, have your best interest. And if you don't have a starting, and I don't mean it has to be five people. It could be one person. 
but you have to have an individual in your life that you really think has your back. And if you don't, make a new one. Mm -hmm. Like we are so scared to reach out to people, but in my life, in my career, I have so many times been like, well, I really want to learn about something. And I've reached out to someone and cold called or asked people or told people what I, was, what I was looking for to see if anyone knew anyone that I could have an informational conversation with. But starting with those accountability partners for it, specifically with your saying with the brain tumor, it's what is the one thing that when you do it, it just suspends you in your heart and in your pleasure. So you you don't have to get to that scary place of, I'm gonna go into meditation and deal with all these voices. Start with something smaller, maybe. Start with something where it's like, I love comedy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on making one joke a week for myself. I'm gonna just work on creating a joke a week. Or I love, I used to paint when I was little. I don't paint anymore because I'm not a really an artist. And I don't care, take some paint, some paper, and just go intuitively. Whatever colors you feel, no one ever has to see it. But if you loved that once and you start incorporating some of those small things, it starts to open up some memories of things that you used to do and, and to remind yourself to be in a place of joy. I, I mean, I literally, I was judging myself for so long. I am the person behind the artist. I support artists. And I've started doing so much art for myself and really enjoying that and wow. creating different pieces and, and, and figuring out what my passion is around art. And it started with me just going to it for fun, not judging it enjoying it and it's, and it really started to change how i felt about my day to day and what i wanted to do so putting some of those small things in of things you used to love i used to love to swing and when i first started this jo this journey i would go to playgrounds and i would swing a little bit and just start to feel what that felt like and just try to stay present to that um and whatever came up around that sometimes hard things came up around that why we don't choose those things anymore the things that we put in place but back to your own lover that's not when you dwell on those things then you look at them like the washer. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then you get back to, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue doing this and remind myself of all the things around this that make me feel great. So cool. I think um, I, I love the advice of really just following what kind of made your heart sing when you were younger. Um, I think it's scary for people because it's easy to be afraid of finding that and then not pursuing it because you're scared not pursuing it because your current job makes you the money that pays the rent um, and affords you your lifestyle whereas that thing over there I have to shut it down because if I want that oh I'm screwed because that would mean I'd have to give up all this and all this certainty to go towards uncertainty and that's terrifying and so we'll just shut that down we'll just push that shit down and I think that's where it's challenging for people because, you know, because that's scary. But what I love about what you're, you're saying is if you can start to incorporate it in little bits, it's almost like um, reprogramming yourself to kind of go in that direction gently. <laughs> gently, it's realistically. And, and it's, it's, you know, a, a lot of metaphysical teachers say, you know, be nice to Grace, be nice to Maria, like be nice to yourself, be kinder to yourself. So even that is that. And that is the mentality is also an addiction is all or nothing. Stacking it all onto the bigger. If I went towards my dream, I have to give up everything and be homeless and you know, and 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 and, and not that those are not real realities. We do have to take care of our lives. Mm -hmm. But if you let's say you want to be a stand up comedian, let's just say. And so you write one joke a week. That's not that's not uh, removing anything else you're doing in your life that's really paying your bills and it's your livelihood. Nothing. It's just starting to put um, like one foot in front of the other. Yeah, and by the way, you get a TikTok account, and if the joke's good, it's gonna fly. And then yeah. you do another joke tomorrow, and then that one will fly. And then eventually, you become a stand-up comedian while you're working at Century Bank. I mean, exactly. and it's step. It's hundred percent steps. It's literally steps, and it's and it's doable. And that's a big thing I do with people when I start working with them. Immediately, I want to know what is your dream, not your goals, nothing in here. Yeah, I want to know what's your dream. And I and and whatever is the dream. Let's say my dream is I'm going to, I'm going to be a professor. You know, this is my dream. Well, I have a lot of work to do, <laughs> but then I could do that now. I could take an online course. I could start thinking about what I want to be teaching. I could start reading up on that. I could think about anyone I may know in, who even remotely knows anything about that, and I could, you know, do a ask them if I can have a FaceTime and do a quick interview with them. There's so many options, but then what that does for you is. Then it doesn't make your life feel like your life is 
here. It makes you feel like you're doing your life and you're handling your things and you're making sure you're responsible in the things that affect the people around you, yeah. but you're also living in your dream. You're living it now. Yeah. So if your dream is a five-year plan, but you're doing a tiny thing towards it every day, you are living in your dream. And when you when you really start to let that sink in, it changes everything. It changes how you feel, connect to people. And then my big one is to say, like, it also takes the work and the steps. So you're in AA, they say, your old life doesn't want to go into memory. So when you start to really be on the road towards your joy and your greatness, all of a sudden saboteurs come in, the mm -hmm. things that we've created to sabotage ourselves. And that's when you really don't judge those things and you're like, oh, information. I must be on the right track because you're really freaking out. <laughs> yeah, when that, <laughs> that could be internal or it could be external. It could be, your, could be your family members who are uncomfortable with your growth, your friends. Right. right. Oh, wow. So that yeah, it's all it's all these there are all these baby steps. Everything is baby steps. Let's be kinder to ourselves. Let's slow it down. Let's give ourselves three to five minutes in the morning. Let's think about who's our starting five. Let's let's figure out who our accountability partners are. What are the things that you can put in place for yourself so that you're you know you're you're really making sure you protect those five minutes a day so that nothing can rob them because that was my issue in the beginning when I first really understood what was was going on with me. Um, it was, I had all these, I would, the night before I had a list of all these things and then it wouldn't get done. I didn't know why I wasn't achieving them. And then of course that was so great for me because then I could just beat myself up more, which is so convenient because then it's like, why do I even do that? And, I, and, I, and like all the things come in. But then when you put the accountability partner in place, someone's then whatever, mine was texting me in the day. Did you meditate? Did you do yoga? Did you do your dance party? You know, all whatever the things were. That would then, I was accountable to someone who I knew loved me and on my back and wasn't out to get me. But I asked them to be accountable and then we were joint accountable because then, you know, the people pleasers are going to go in their heads about, well, they're doing this for me. So you make it a mutual accountability. You're both in something similar. And then you have each other's back in that way. And even that. And, and I tell people too, people who are alone and quarantining alone, don't wait until the last minute when you really want to talk to someone to reach out. It's so important to set these things up in advance. Like I have a thing with my sisters now that every Sunday we do, we get together and we talk and we just talk about nothing, tarot cards, our kids, whatever. But it's been really wonderful because then I'm never, I know it's coming. I can look forward to it and then I don't have to feel bad that I'm bothering one or what are you doing and they don't have time. And then you add and start stacking the things around that. So it's just preparing your life in advance in different ways to make sure that you're finding joy in the small ways that you can find it in a way that really fills up your heart. I love it. I also, I love, um, I love that there was something I was reading about you too, where, um, you know, your childhood really set you up for that kind of successful path of winning, right? Like, you know, I feel like the same thing if, if, um, if I didn't have the, the, the trials and tribulations and the things to, you know, overcome, I mm. would have never had the, you know, it's like, it's a different kind of DNA that's just set up in you to go win. Um, because there is no other choice sometimes. And I think that what I love to, to share with people is to not be ashamed of what got you here. It's now your choice to make some edits going forward right because I would have never succeeded the way I did if I didn't have some of that kind of messed upness <laughs> along the journey right it's it's what makes you you it's what gives you that drive so I don't regret anything I just need to make adjustments for the, ch the path I'm choosing now well the thing is that's back to the story right that goes back to the story so I I was saying to my son this morning I I penalized my parents for years. I mean, they were the villains of my story, big. And, I, and it, it was a very convenient way for me not to really deal with my side of the story. And I don't believe in victim consciousness, so I do hold this idea that, that there's, on some, there's a con contribution to where you are in your life on some level for everyone. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, and so the, on a small or in a large way. So once I really stepped out of that and reintroduced myself to my parents and really started to you know, get to know them as individual people, I realized that, yeah, it was because I moved around like a crazy person as a young person, because I was, I was in all these different schools and all these different religious institutions. And I was, 
always around different people that it was a really hard thing as a kid. I felt like I always had to be entertaining and I was, you know, the class clown and because I was always wanting to be liked quickly because I was back into another social situation and people I didn't know. Yeah, but that made me exactly who I am today. I'm curious about everyone. I find everyone fascinating. I mean, I am, I am 50, but I feel like I'm 11 years old because I, like, I find everybody so interesting. And I think it was that. And when I got out of the, you know, demonizing that, and then the big part of it was when I was a teenager, I felt like such a, a freak of nature as a kid. I was, you know, my, my parents were mixed. And although it was the seventies and that was the beginning, it still was not, you know, that common. And I was raised Quaker and my brother's mother's family is Irish and Jewish. My father's family is black Southern Baptist. And it was just a hodgepodge of things. And then as a teenager, I met a whole bunch of kids who were becoming artists, recording artists and, and all kinds of artists. And I really learned then that I really have a gift of I'm able to translate art. To people. I have a really gift in that way. I can feel what someone is. I can translate to people, just even when people are not saying with their physical features and their gestures. And then I realized that was a gift. Um, and then I really worked so hard to push that gift out and make sure that everyone had that light support and it was when I really learned how to balance that and bring that light in for myself. But that's what that is. It's the same thing. It's that those stories of, you know, my childhood sucked and that's why I can't do the thing. Yeah, maybe your childhood really did suck and people have had some atrocious things happen to them. Absolutely. But what are you going to do with that? And in, and then in that way, that's a dismissal of all there there is. And I think that's, you know, Lauren Zander, the other day we had this great conversation about the light and the dark. And we have we get marketed to and propaganda a lot in this world you know it's, it's capitalism there's business people are selling things and we sell things a lot with emotions of what you should do or how you could look or how you could feel if you had this thing so there's a lot that goes around that until we start to really understand that we're actually everything you know the seasons we are prepared for winter we might love things about winter but there's things about winter that sucks some people don't like being hot and don't like summer but love being off from school so everything is yin and yang everything is light and dark and when you start to really it's the balance of all that is the beauty of you then you start to appreciate everything that has come forth in your life up until this point then you have no regrets you only have learnings lots and lots of learnings i've had a bizarre complicated tumultuous amazing fun difficult challenging scary life and i wouldn't have changed i wouldn't change a thing yeah but see you the way you're presenting it with yin and yang is so much better than you know, like sometimes I've described it as like a roller coaster. And I think that's where people go wrong is, you know, it's like, oh, my God, one minute we're up and then the next minute we're down. And that's, and that's such an exhausting view. But if you look at it as yin and yang, you expect it. That's right. Like seasons. That's why exactly. Or we get taller and there's things that we feel good about changing and things because they they hold such emotional resonance that we connect as fear. It, it's too hard to change because we don't want to feel that level of whatever we perceive that to be. But even the idea, I love the roller coaster reference because even think about that. You've been to a park once with many children of different ages and different people's children, and some will walk up to that roller coaster and with intense terror. And and you can't get them on the roller coaster, and some are running to the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a perfect example of, of what our minds do. You know, our minds, we used to hunt, and we used to have to have someone say to us, Maria, there's a lion behind you, turn around. But we're not hunting lions anymore, but we still have that voice reacting to it with the same level of fear and intensity to things like you left your purse. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same level of intensity. And maybe that's a horrible thing. You don't want to you don't want to lose your wallet and stuff, but you're not going to die necessarily from losing your purse. Yeah. Well, and back to the roller coaster, what's crazy is we choose to go on it. Right. But that's the same thing as life. We 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 come into this world and it is going to be a roller coaster. And you, it's how you how you look at it because you're choosing to go on something that's going to terrify you. You're going to have a drop, but the roller coaster would be shit without the drops. Exactly. And that's life. <laughs> people love makeup sex, but they don't like fighting. <laughs> it's a combination of things. Yeah. I like that. That's a really good takeaway. The yin and the yang. Um, that really, that really hit me. I love that. Grace Harry. You can find her on Instagram at Grace Harry. Everything you need to know is there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time. Yes, bye. Have a great one. You too. Um, I am obsessed. She's amazing. I mean, okay. I right? Ran, I ran out of, I'm literally like, 
Kelsey's <laughs> two pages of notes. Like up at my top. Like eh. she's incredible. <laughs> she's incredible. Wow. A takeaway too. I like she's such a great guest for us, Maria, because she's like passionate about unlocking our dreams, mm. passionate about joy, and there's like so many action steps. Like yeah. our listeners, I implore you. If you aren't writing some of the stuff down that she's saying that you can start doing tomorrow, you should be, you know? Yeah. And for anyone who's listening, we did a Patreon episode with her. So tune in for that. Join us over a Patreon. She went through her me journal, me alter exercise with us on how to get yourself on the right track to finding your inner joy. So tune in for that this week. You're going to love it. In the meantime, thank you guys for being with us as always. If you loved this episode, share it with your friends on social media, on email. Help us bring together people that would benefit from this show in a big way. And if you haven't already and you would be so kind, drop us a review on Apple Podcasts. Um, We are so grateful for your support. And also, if you like today's episode, check out episode 111 with play expert Dr. Amanda Gummer. Along the same lines, talking about finding that childhood joy and i think you'll really love it in the meantime you can follow us at grace harry at jeff graham i mean at jeff crane graham at jeffrey crane graham <laughs> at kels meyer too and remember to follow us on instagram at better together with maria be nice people make good choices and be present <laughs>